My name is Elizabeth. Um, I'm one of the co-founders at DeepNote. Um, the title of my talk is Notebooks Got Your Modern Data Back. Um, it was supposed to be a pun. I was told it's not a very good one after I submitted it. So we're just going to go with it. Um, so I have kind of three things I want to share with you today. Um, my first objective is to convince you that data science notebooks are purple. Second, um, I want to talk about uh, best practices for working in notebooks. If your team uses Jupyter Notebooks or any other implementation, I'm going to talk about how you can use that on your team in a more effective way. And lastly, we're going to take a look under the hood of DeepNote. So at DeepNote, we're building the next generation notebook. I'm going to show you kind of some of the design considerations and principles that are actually collaborative. So let's start here. This is uh, an abstraction of the modern data stack that we all know in some shape or form. We're going from the uh, data sources on the left all the way to the BI analytics bucket on the right. And so while there are certain principles and best practices at the back of the data stack, and even some forming in the middle, like the decoupling of the metrics layer from the BI into the middle, um, the BI analytics bucket actually contains a lot of different tools underneath. And underneath that, there's some of that. So what we end up with is a bunch of BI and analytics tools on one hand, and a bunch of personas on the other one. And these tools are not persona-based. So while there are skill dichotomies, this is what happens. On one side, this is great because there is no single perfect tool for every single use case. Um, and it's good that we kind of use different tools for different use cases. On the other hand, we are actually missing out on a lot of shared context and organizational knowledge in the space in between. So the question is, how do we retain and how do we share this knowledge? I didn't have a good way to talk about this for the longest time um, until this article came out by, by Anna Filipova last year, um, where she's talking about this notion of purple people. Um, so the, the, the metaphor she's making is that you have the blue people who are people wearing the tech hat, and then there are some red people who are the business people who are, let's say, data consumers. And when you combine these two, um, there's a rare breed called purple people. And purple people, while they are not subject matter experts or these like T-shaped analysts, um, they can sort of move on this generalist level. They can take the problem at hand and find the right tool to solve that problem. So I actually believe that there's purple people in different parts of the business. Um, they currently worked in a fairly siloed way. What we can do is really create um, uh, a whole that's larger than the sum of its parts if we can bring this together. And I believe that notebooks can help us actually create this shared organizational context. Why do I think that? So if you think about notebook as a, as a paradigm, um, it's actually something that's explainable and transparent. It combines the narrative of your analysis in Markdown. It gives you the logic for your analysis in code. And then it has visuals and insights on the output. So by the general design of the medium, um, it is explainable and transparent. It can create this shared context. It can be very easily passed on and collaborative. It is also a general purpose medium. Like It's currently being served for used for so many use cases, all the way from like model prototyping, model training, um, analysis reports, uh, prototyping pipelines, data warehouse exploration. It's already being used for such a wide um, breadth of use cases by different personas. And so you might think, you know, we all know that notebooks are wonderful in the single player mode. They are amazing for the um, exploratory programming use cases. But how can we actually use them collaboratively? So at DeepNote, um, as a team, we've worked with and at a bunch of data teams across companies like Palantir, Google, Mozilla, McKinsey. And so what we came up with is a set of couple of principles um, inherited from the software engineering world that I believe can really help you um, in the notebook sort of world as your team scales. So the first principle is to follow um, established software practices uh, to write code, write documentation, write tests. This might be obvious, uh, but this is something that we should really learn from the world of um, the software engineering. It leads to explainability and transparency of your analysis. 
second, logging experiment automatically. So if you do have to do this manually, you're not going to do it anyway. If you automate this practice of experiment logging, you have a much better view of experimentation that has happened. It's much easier to share and create a shared context. Um, here you can use tools like Comet ML Run AI, um, Weights and Biases. Next, it's to split your development and production environment. This, again, might be pretty obvious, but um, if you want to kind of work collaboratively and efficiently as a team, it is important to give your team a permission and full confidence to experiment and even to fail. What happens is that if you take, um, there's this asterisk hill here, which says sanitize your user data. If you just fork your production environment, uh, make it your development environment, there still might be PII passwords um, that your team might not be comfortable using, so do that. Four, parameterize your notebooks. Um, this is really a step towards effective collaboration. The person coming after you can easily see the inputs, the levers they can pick up and change, um, and the outcome is easy handover of your analysis, reusability of your notebooks. Um, lastly, continuous integration. Again, uh, a very established practice in the software engineering world. So when you ship any incremental change to the users, to the stakeholders, you have to make sure your notebooks are reproducible. Can they run from the top to bottom um, without breaking, without breaking the workflow? So you might think, you know, these are all great, maybe even obvious, but they are all like pretty blue practices. Um, so we saw a deep note, we saw this inherent potential of notebooks for the purple people and for the purple world. Um, so we decided to really double down on focusing on this blue persona. We wanted to create a really, really powerful, flexible interface for the power user, while also reducing the barrier for the red user. We are obviously standing on the shoulders of giants here, like Wolfram Alpha and Jupyter Notebooks, but how can we really double down and make notebooks truly purple? So easy enough. Um, we start with the blue. In DeepNote, we have implemented language interoperability. What that means is that you can directly tap into your Snowflake Redshift database. You can query your data with SQL, um, save them into variables in Python, and use that in your analysis. You can also bring in your R kernel, your Julia Scala, whatever you're using. We want the interface to be flexible and helpful to meet you where you are. Um, on to my next point, integrations. Again, very same story. Um, we want to play nice with your stack. You might be a data team of two. You might be a fully fledged company. Oh, what happened? Thank you. OK, cool. Um, yeah, so integration. So we integrate with all of that that you've seen on the slide before and more. Um, Cult intelligence. Uh, this is, again, alluding to the idea of uh, building and writing clean code that can be then moved into production. So. In DeepNode, we have things like autocomplete and linting. And you cannot see my slides again. Sure, thank you. No. Sure. Is this counting towards my remote? Yay, thank you. Um, was I talking about this, code intelligence? OK, cool. Um, yeah, so linting autocomplete, um, just you're writing um, cleaner code that's ready for production. Next. Mix in the red. So here we thought about what are the things that really help us bake in the empathy for the data consumer, for the business user. 
Reactivity. Um, a common complaint of notebooks is this out-of-order execution, um, meaning that the outputs of your notebook don't match the logic uh, and the linear flow of the notebook. So if I'm a newbie to notebooks, this might be really intuitive and can trip me over. So what we've baked in is this reactivity, um, reactive execution, which ensures that the output of your notebook is always consistent with the actual state. So if you change your input, the output um, and all the cells that pertain to it downstream change dynamically. Seamless editing. We think there's no reason for business people to have to know how to write markdown to be able to accomplish something in notebooks. So we have this premise of what you see is what you get. Same editing experience as you would have in like Google Docs or anything else really. Data apps. Um, we started out by actually doing something where we like gave users the opportunity to hide cells. Um, but we found out that users, some of the users, like execs, were still not comfortable coming into that space and sort of um, digesting those outputs in that way. So what you see on the screen is on your left, you have the notebook. On the right, you have this sort of canvas where you're picking and choosing cells that you want to move into your data app. And as your notebook runs, let's say it runs on schedule every morning, um, it also dynamically propagates to the actual published report so that your stakeholders have this fresh um, data app updated. Cool, and that brings us to purple. So what are the things that enable those folks who might be red um, and those folks who might be skewing right, uh, uh, blue to kind of come together and learn from each other? Collaboration is an obvious one. I don't have to talk about this. Um, we have a real-time collaboration in the same way that you would experience in Google Docs, the same way you would experience it in Figma or anything else. We obviously also have asynchronous collaboration, um, which is done through comments. And knowledge organization. This is a big one because um, I was talking about this at the beginning. How do we then take all that learning and enable people to learn from each other and sort of to cross-pollinate? So folders um, is what we have for knowledge organization. Then on the top of that, we are building access rights so that you can make sure that appropriate people are seeing and doing the appropriate things in this environment. So our workspaces, you know, you can bring in your exec who can only have viewing rights. You can have your PM come in and give comments and maybe you have your scientists to give subject matter input. Um, you can have your analysts in sort of editing um, mode. And then templates, it's really easy to fork projects of others. So if I fork a project of my colleague, I inherit all the dependencies, all the integrations, all the data sets, the Docker environments. I can just like get straight to work. So that's where we are. Um, you might ask, you know, what does this purple world look like? And I wanted to share a case study of one of our customers, Gasto. So DeepNode is already being used at hundreds of organizations, Gasto being one of them. Um, we actually have multiple teams across the organization using us, all the way from data science to um, people analytics, which is this story here. So what we're seeing here is we had the people team, so the HR and recreators using Tableau and Google Drive, analysts using um, Excel and RStudio, and then execs only digesting outputs um, through PowerPoint. And this is the world we're hoping to build and that we're already seeing developing at Gusto. So what happened is that um, DeepNote sort of became the center of gravity for all the data conversations. Your data engineers give you the credentials to connect into your data warehouses. Um, you as an analyst don't need to build complex pipelines. You can do easy scheduling jobs in DeepNote automatically. If you want to build data apps, you could totally do that. But again, we have to meet the right people where they are. So if you want to just export um, things um, into things like Tableau or Google Drive, you're absolutely uh, you can absolutely do that. And so the change we're seeing is that um, analysts can actually focus on more high order problems and people are comfortable coming into notebooks and having that conversation right there at that place. These are the outcomes. Streamlined workflows, um, reduced time to insight by breaking down the silos and use of purple everywhere. Um, so I think I'm on time. Thank you. Thank you.